Hello everybody and welcome to an awesome Hey Day video. My name is Jennifer and here on YouTube I go by Gizmo Spike. So in today's video I would like to talk to you about silo management. I've been asked a lot recently for tips on dealing with the massive amounts of crops we need to store in our silo so I thought it was time to make a video on it. I'd like to start off with some basic info about the silo and what is stored there. So as of the recording of this video we have 45 different crops that are stored in the silo once harvested or collected. And that includes 32 field crops, 12 different tree and bush crops, and the peanuts that we got with the most recent update. That is a lot of crops that we need to make room for in our silos. And if your silo is on the small side, you can run out of room very quickly. So good silo management is extremely important. I have come up with a few tips that I hope will help you to manage your silo space more efficiently. Tip number one, I actually did not come up with on my own. This tip was told to me two years ago when I first started making Heyday content and it's honestly pretty brilliant. It comes from one of the first people to ever subscribe to my channel, Almosta, so I'm gonna call this the Almosta method. Now, I am sure that she is not the first person to think of this, nor is she the only person that does this, but since she is the one that I got the idea from, I'm gonna give her the credit for it. So. You'll notice earlier that I said crops are stored in the silo once harvested or collected. And that's a pretty important thing to remember. And that brings me to tip number one. Tip number one, AKA the almost the method for trees and bushes. And that is use the free storage you get from the trees and the bushes. So what do I mean by that? Well, what I mean is this, instead of collecting from your apple tree or your raspberry bush, the second that they're ready to be collected from only collect from them when you need them. The fruit will stay ready to collect on the tree or bush until you need it. So instead of collecting the fruit and having it to take up valuable space in our silos that are already bursting at the seams, just leave it there on the tree where it is taking up zero space until you need it to make a product or fill a boat crate. Now, for me personally, I don't like to have zero of the fruit in my silo because I make so much stuff and send so many boats that I'm usually worried that I will run out. So for me personally, when I get to blow a hundred of something, I will go and collect some from the trees. I used to collect from the trees as soon as the fruit was ready, but I realized that I was just wasting a ton of silo space. And not only that, but a ton of saws and axes as well. So now I stick to my 100 rule and not only have I saved space in my silo, but I also use way less saws and axes. And with 12 different trees and bushes, you can save well over a thousand spaces in your silo by just leaving it alone until you need it. And if you look at my trees and my bushes here on the screen, you will see that everything is ready to be collected from currently. Well, my, uh, my cacao trees are growing right now, but that's because I needed cacaos last night. So I went and harvested from them, but basically everything else is ready to be collected from when I need it. Tip number two is all about those field crops and is a little bit more complicated than tip number one. So to help with managing the field crops, I've broken them all down into four different tiers. Tier number one can almost always find in the daily dirt. Tier number two can usually find in the daily dirt. Tier number three can sometimes find in the daily dirt. And tier number four can almost never find in the daily dirt. And you guys might not quite agree with me on how I have them categorized, but here is what I have them, um, how I have them broken down. Tier number one, I have wheat, corn, carrots, soybeans, sugarcane, indigo, pumpkins, and strawberries. In tier number two, I have chili peppers, tomatoes, cotton, potatoes, sesame seeds, and pineapple. In tier number three, I have lily, sunflower, garlic, lettuce, rice, ginger, beetroot, cucumber, mushrooms, broccoli, and eggplant. And in tier number four, I have onions, tea leaves, bell pepper, mint, grapes, peony, and watermelon. So you're probably wondering why I've made these tiers and how does this help you with silo management? So the reason for these tiers is this. For certain crops, I never, ever, ever grow them myself. I always rely on and turn to the paper to find them. So this does basically one of two things. 
it helps me because not only is our silo space precious, but our field space is precious as well. So by not planting some crops myself, it allows me to plant other crops that are more important and also allows me to not have to waste space with stuff I can easily find in the daily dirt. So I never plant personally, I never plant corn, indigo, pumpkins, or strawberries on my main farm. When I need them, I just go into the daily dirt and I get them. I do plant carrots, soybeans, and sugarcane, but that's because A, I have a pretty big silo, um, B, because I use a ton of those particular crops and I would rather spend my time elsewhere on the game rather than looking for them in the paper. So I like to keep around 300-ish of what I call the big five. And the big five um, I consider to be wheat, corn, carrots, sugarcane, and soybeans. And I only ever plant them during the day. So for the tiers, I'll break them down like this. Tier one, you do not need to keep very many of these crops in your salad because you can basically jump into the daily dirt at any time and find them. And if you're really low on the big five and you can't find them in the daily dirt, it only takes a little while to grow more. I know the longer growing ones like strawberries are a bit scary to get too low on, but I promise I have never looked in more than like five refreshes of the paper to find them. For tier two, I'd keep enough so you have them when you need them, but you don't need to keep huge amounts of them as you can usually find them in the paper. For tier three and four, my advice on these is do not get too low. Some of the short-timed ones like garlic and mushrooms, you know, those grow really fast, so you don't have to worry too much about them. But others like tea leaves and onions that you will find as you level up that you use a ton of, you know, you can run out of fast and they take forever to grow and you will not find those in the paper. So why are these tiers important? Focus your precious space on keeping larger quantities of tier three and four crops and worry less about tier one and two crops. Tip number three, use baby farms. Now, this tip will not apply to everyone because not everyone has a baby farm, but if you have one or more baby farms, use them and their silo to your advantage. Keep a small stock of those tier two crops like cotton and tomatoes, etc., on your baby farms, and then you don't have to worry about having space for them in the silo of your main farm. And if you have higher level baby farms, then grow some of those tier three crops like rice and lettuce. If you have baby farms, make sure you're using them to your fullest potential by taking advantage of their fields and their silo space. And I have a little bonus tip. As part of my silo management, I like to make sure that I have room for weeding. Weeding for me is a huge part of this game, and so I keep as much space as I possibly can available in my silo so that I can weed efficiently. And honestly, I highly recommend that you guys do the exact same thing because weeding will help you get those freebies that will not only help you upgrade your silo, but will help you upgrade your barn expand your land, get mining tools and those saws and axes to cut down those bushes and trees once you have collected from them uh, to their fullest potential. The silo, like the barn, is a balancing act. You need to figure out what works best for you. I cannot give you exact numbers for how many of each crop to keep. I use a lot of onions, so I always make sure that I have plenty available, but you might barely use any, so you need to keep less. And I also like to have at least a thousand free spaces in my silo so that I can harvest wheat. You need to do what's right for you and what works for your play style. There is no right or wrong way to play this game. I give tips, they're just my ideas, and they will hopefully help you. But in the end, you need to play how you want to play. My way might not work for you, and that is totally fine. Hopefully the tips I gave in this video will help you to manage your ever-growing silos. And if it did, I hope you'll give it a thumbs up. And if there's something that you think I missed, please comment below and let me know. And if you're not already subscribed to my channel, remember that it is free to subscribe to a channel on YouTube, but it will make me very, very happy. So go ahead and hit that beautiful red subscribe button and tick the bell so you know when I go live and when I post new videos. Thanks so much for watching. Happy farming. Weeding is life. Peace. It's hey day, it's hey day, it's hey